Udon Thani has been such a wonderful part of my journey. What an incredible place to stay. The food I have found here has been amazing and I've decided that before I cook my final dish here, I have time to go back for just one more cup of fresh brewed coffee at my favourite little local cafe and spend some time talking to the owner about business, food and just life in general. We're here at the Chorun Hotel. It was actually the very first hotel built in Udon Thani. It was built just after the Vietnam War as a place for the soldiers to come and have some rest. And we thought this would be the ideal location to cook these mud crabs with toasted chili jam and holy basil. Firstly, I want to show you how to prepare the crab. So with the crab, we've cut it in half and with the shell on the back, just peel it, revealing the gills. And then with the gills, peel them off as well. The claws on the crab are quite large, so before you cook it, make sure you get the back of a knife and just crack it to allow the juices in the pan to get inside the crab. Start off with about a tablespoon of oil and then put in five cloves of crushed garlic. To that we add four shallots, finely sliced. Don't let them brown too much, otherwise they become bitter. But once they have a light golden colour, time to add the crabs. So once the crabs go in, you'll see them change to that lovely orange colour. At that point, put the chilli jam in, about a tablespoon. And just give that a minute for the chilli jam to toast. All of the flavours are coming out of the chilli jam and now's the ideal time to add either some stock, some fish stock or some water. About one and a half cups to help create some steam in the wok. The crabs need about five minutes before we come back and have a look at them. So after five minutes, the crabs are cooked perfectly. We've got some long red and green chilies, some spring onions cut into battens, and just give that a gentle stir. To finish it off, some holy basil, a really good pinch. We don't add any sugar to this dish because the toasted chilli jam is already sweet. So we only have to finish off with those two high notes, the lime juice and some fish sauce to add some acidity and some salt. A splash of fish sauce and again one more stir. The aromas coming up from this fresh mud crab and from the lime and the toasted chilli jam are incredible. This dish would be lovely eaten with jasmine rice as it traditionally is in Thailand. However, even a nice piece of crusty bread could be eaten really well with this dish. Okay, so the crabs are ready and just time to serve. Mound them up in a large bowl and put them in the centre of the table for everyone to share. So we garnish that with a bit more red chilli and holy basil and there you have it. Mud crabs cooked in toasted chilli jam and holy basil or pu bad brick pao.
We're here on the northern border of Thailand in Nong Kai at this incredible market. I'm going to go and buy some fresh produce. Cannot wait. Every market in Thailand has its own character and style. I just never get tired of the different experiences I have when visiting the markets. It seems that no matter what you are looking for, you'll find it right here. You may need to have a close look though, as market vendors can seriously pack a lot of produce into a very small space. If you stand back and take in the amazing array of colourful produce, blended together with the shining chrome of tuk-tuks, smiling faces, awnings and signs, umbrellas splashed with colourful logos and print, you will notice that it actually looks like a wonderful piece of artwork, a painting that has come to life. Local people always have their favourite places to go and having a routine to follow helps them to get in and out of the market without any stress. I've seen people load up scooters with all of their produce with boxes tied to the side and bags strapped around the handlebars. Different, but effective. The markets have a very strong sense of community. People in the markets are like a family. They work together seven days a week, sometimes for 10 hours a day. They get to know each other's families and share with each other their stories. Uncles, aunties, grandparents and children, mothers, fathers, sisters and brothers. They're all here at some part of the day, just looking for the perfect ingredients to take home and whip up something for the family dinner. And that's the beauty of the market. Being an everyday event, the only thing they ever think about is the one next dinner, one day at a time. After the break, I cook a hot and sour summer dish before visiting one of Thailand's most dynamic food industries, visited by thousands of people every day. Northern Thailand. I love the cool temperature up here and the serenity of the Mekong River. Time moves by slowly and the people are so lovely. We are on the northern border of Laos at Nong Kai, and it is here that you will find the Thai Lao Friendship Bridge. It's a nice cultural crossover point and many Lao people love to come here for shopping and take some time to relax. We're here in Nong Kai at Wat Si Saket which is one of the nine most sacred places in Nong Kai. I'm going to cook a dish today called Mul Manau, which is pork dressed in lots of lime juice, chili, garlic, and it's a really delicious, fresh dish. So to get started, lighting the pot, just a small amount of water, about half a cup of water. You could use pork stock as well, but water will do just fine. Now the pork, you can use pork fillet, or you could use pork neck, or even one of the cuts from the leg would be fine as long as it's very lean. Then take the pork and put it into the water and we just want to cook it to the point where the pork is cooked but the water's also disappeared. That's the perfect point. Okay, so while the pork's cooking, I want to show you what to do with the gai lan. Gai lan is the Chinese broccoli. We actually don't use the leaves in this dish. I'm going to keep these leaves for a dish later on today. What we do use in Mumanao is the stalk. And with the stalk of gai lan, the skin's quite tough, so we need to peel the skin, cut those into thinner strips. And then put the stalks into ice water to let them go really crunchy and hard. Okay, so the pork is perfect. All of the liquid has disappeared, and now it's time to add something sweet. You could use a sugar syrup, but if you're using plain sugar, add it while the pork's hot, so it can dissolve into the pork. Give that a quick stir. To balance with the sweetness, we use some lime juice, about one tablespoon. And then we add the chopped chili and the chopped garlic. Very hot, lots of flavor. And then, Finish that off with some fish sauce to balance again. Equal parts of the sweetness, the acidity, and the fish sauce. Needs a bit more chilli. 
but the balance of the other flavours are perfect. Okay, with the pork, just put that into a bowl or onto a plate and make sure the dressing goes over the pork. Then we take the gailan stalks that have been soaked in the ice water, nice and crunchy, and we put those on the edge. And there we have it on a beautiful day in Nongkai, pork dressed in lime juice, chili, garlic, mumanao. Thailand has many thousands of food courts and it would be wrong of me if I was not to acknowledge the quality of the food that is available at these very affordable eateries. When you visit a food court, you'll need to buy an electronic coupon. You can then walk around, choose one of hundreds of fresh dishes on offer, swipe the coupon and enjoy. For about a dollar a plate, you can really experience a wide range of dishes. There is a huge selection of food including fresh Thai desserts. It's quick, easy and a convenient place to eat when taking a break from your shopping. So we're here at the Asawan Food Plaza in Nong Kai. Now the reason I've decided to cook a dish here today is because I wanted to showcase that at a food court in Thailand you can still eat really healthy. Not many processed foods at all, lots of soups and noodles, fresh produce. It's a real attribute to Thailand that they still have fresh produce in this situation. So the dish we're going to cook today is Pad Siul Plamuk, which is using these wonderful fresh flat rice noodles and also calamari caught locally, so tender. Really lovely dish. Light the wok. And you need a relatively high heat. If the heat's too low, all of the moisture will come out of the calamari and it will turn into a stew. So we start with just a tablespoon or two of oil. To that, we've got a quarter of a carrot that's been sliced and just saute that off. The carrot's the hardest vegetable, so we need to start there. And then we're going to add the flavor to it. It's lovely being here, seeing so many people eating, people enjoying their food. Thailand's such a lovely country. Garlic two or three tablespoons of garlic, but make sure you don't burn it. Just cook it very gently. And as soon as you can smell the aromats coming out of the garlic, it's time to add the calamari. Nice hot pan, add the calamari. Now calamari should only cook for no more than a few minutes. So we don't want to brown it. And now it's time to add our egg. Move the vegetables and the calamari to the side and just crack one egg into a clean place in the pan. The egg semi-cooked and then we go in with the noodles. The noodles are so fresh, you don't have to soak them in water first. Very tender, delicious. And then we add the leaves from a gailan or the Chinese broccoli, they go in. A small amount of dark soy. Some sugar. A splash of fish sauce. And a couple of tablespoons of oyster sauce. Check the colour of the dish and then have a look at the end to see if it needs more dark soy. Just a little bit more dark soy because pad siul, the word siul means soy sauce. So it needs to have that dark color. Okay, so we'll plate that up. Just very gently, starting with all of the noodles and put the colorful ingredients on top. Okay, just finish that off with a sprinkling of fresh bean shoots, a wedge of lime on the side, and it is as simple, quick, fresh and easy as that. We're here, Nong Kai, food stall, good food, Pad Siul Plamuk. After the break, we travel to the rainforest where I go in search of the beautiful blue butterfly pea. 
and a friend shows us how to make a delicious dish using this unique flour. I've made my way four hours east through the rugged mountains to Pisanalo, sweeping roads through the most incredible vegetation and a canopy of brilliant green. It feels like the humidity raises by 300% due to the level of water that's held in the atmosphere here. But it's worth a visit to take a deep breath, relax, soak up the sun as it makes its way through the treetops. A time to feel at one with Mother Nature. We're here in the north of Thailand at Pisanalo in this delightful rainforest resort. And I'm joined by the chef and owner Nit. Sawadikap Nit. Sawadikap. And Nit built this from scratch 21 years ago. And it is really a testament to the area. And just up the road, she has her own organic farm where they grow these amazing butterfly peas. The butterfly peas grow in abundance in the rainforest area. They're a great source of flavour, nutrients and colour in so many foods and drinks. Nid's brother Ken makes a daily trip to his organic farm just 100 metres up the road from their hand-built relaxation resort. Ken and Nid are really one with nature. Taking farming processes back to the basics, he has taken a leaf out of the book from the Royal Agricultural Project in Chiang Mai. This is the concept where animals, insects, birds, flowers, fruits and vegetables are all used to work in harmony with one another to create rich fertile soil, water and energy conservation. I couldn't believe the quality of the produce I found. The fragrance of the pandan leaf and lemongrass filled the air. I can't wait to come back here and spend some more time in this wonderful part of Thailand. Which is the butterfly pea in a tempura batter with a calamari pork and prawn dipping. Fantastic, can't wait to see it. So, what do we do first? Okay. <laughs> so, this batter, the mm. flour, is it just plain flour? Uh, plain. Tempura flour. Tempura flour. Tempura flour. Yes. Cup. And put the water. Cold water. Cold water. Cup. Yes. After that. It's really important when you make a tempura batter not to use a whisk. A tempura batter should have little lumps of flour in it. It actually makes it much lighter. And iced cold water will make it much crispier as well. It's also important when you make a batter that you season it. Just a small amount of salt and pepper. Cup. Okay. So we'll just turn the gas up a little bit. Now these peas have actually been just rinsed very quickly. They're grown organically, but just rinse quickly to make sure they're really clean before we cook them. Cup. The colour is incredible. They actually make drinks out of this as well, make tea and soft drinks. Really lovely, delicious, delicious sweet flavour. So they really only take just one or two minutes to cook. Yes. Very, very quick. Yes. The tempura flowers are cooked in 180 degree oil. This dish is traditionally, originally done using morning glory. But you can use other types of spinach or beetle leaf or anything that is a leaf. And this particular dish is specifically done right here in this area. Okay, so we'll drain those for a minute. And then we'll make the dipping. Dipping, right. dipping up. Okay. So with the dipping, you can thumb day up, up. Starting off with some toasted chili jam, nam prick bao, and nam pla fish sauce. Some lime juice, two tablespoons. Nam tan, chamay hap. Nam tan, sorry. And some sugar, uh -huh. one tablespoon of sugar. Just mix together. In Thailand, they have so many different types of dippings. They have green chili dippings and seafood dipping sauces, pork dipping sauces. It's really common to have fresh vegetables or fried vegetables 
just and then just put the dipping through it. A really simple sort of alfresco dining. So, I need like uh, a cup. Milk. Milk, so yes. evaporated milk. It was really interesting to see evaporated milk being used in this dish. It adds a smooth creaminess to the sauce. Really quite delicious. And onion, red onion. Red, red onion, so red shallot, yes. about one large or two small shallots. Chili. Cup. So about four bullet chilies, chopped finely. The chili adds such a wonderful kick to the dipping. Not only hot, but fragrant as well. And pork. Some minced pork that's just been blanched. In fact, all the meats have just been blanched quickly in a small amount of stock. The pork finely diced, the calamari finely diced, and the prawn finely diced as well. Pramuk? Pramuk. Cup? Yes, pramuk. <laughs> and gung. 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 <laughs> Perfect. I'll move those out the way for you. Yeah. Once the meats have been added, give it a really good stir and bring it all together. Incredible, it's, it's such a simple thing but we don't often think of making a dipping in this way. You can pre-do this the day before and then mix it together just before your guests arrive. Yeah. Cup. Once the dipping is finished, have a final taste just to make sure the flavours are balanced. To serve, pour the dipping into a small bowl just big enough to hold the sauce. Place the drained crispy flowers onto a plate and serve alongside the dipping and maybe just a few fresh flowers to garnish. So there we have it, a very simple easy dish, organic butterfly peas with a prawn calamari and pork dipping. I have to try it before we finish. And this is how it's done, on top. Oh Lloyd D, hello Mark. The flavour is incredible, love it. From Peace Analog. Lovely place, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Before retiring for the night, Pinid made me a sweet drink of fresh brewed tea using the blue butterfly pea. Time to take a breather under the rainforest canopy, enjoy some fresh local dragon fruit, and relax before continuing my journey. On the next episode of Duncan's Thai Kitchen, we cook one of the most flavoursome and unique seafood dishes and we continue our journey into one of the oldest kingdoms in Thailand to cook one of the tastiest dishes so far. We look forward to seeing you then.